Good morning. Just a few announcements this morning. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had elections, and some people were wondering uh, who got elected. Well, the truth is, uh, the people on the ballot got elected. We, we had several people pull their names back, so there weren't extras. And so those, those, uh, those that were on the ballot uh, will serve as officers, and we'll, and we'll post that list um, soon. Um, if you need a mask uh, or yours breaks during church, the ushers do have some in the back. And they want you to be aware of that. And then finally, we started a Revelation Bible study, Sunday nights, uh, 7 o'clock on Zoom. Pastor sent out the information. You can probably ask anyone. They'll give you the information uh, in their, from their email. And uh, we've done the introduction, and we've done the uh, epistles in the beginning of Revelation, but now we're starting with the first vision tonight. So uh, please log on tonight and, and study that book together. Now you can wave and greet your brothers and sisters.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We take a moment to reflect on our sin and God's grace. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, Keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who's within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6, and this will be our sermon text today. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. We read together. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. We thank you again, Heavenly Father, for this privilege of being with brothers and sisters in Christ. What a a great gift this family of God is. We pray that today you would open our hearts and our minds, that we may walk as your family, that we may live as your people, and that we may rejoice in the gifts you have given to us in our baptism, being united to Jesus. We pray these things in his name. Amen. I don't know how many times I've heard in my 32 years of being a pastor something along the lines of, I just want to walk with Jesus. I just want to be with Christ. And they're not talking necessarily about dying. They're talking about in this life. They want to feel the presence of Jesus with them. It's a common thing that I've heard for so many years. The question becomes, what does this life with Jesus look like? What does life with Christ look like? Well, at least a part of it is answered in the reading from Romans. Life with Christ means we live in our baptism. Now, I know that sounds like cliche, right? It sounds trite. It sounds like something Lutheran pastors are supposed to say. But the reality is that's exactly what Paul is saying, isn't it? That life with Christ is about living in our baptism. As many of you who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. That is the theme of Paul. To be baptized, to have faith in the promise of baptism, means we are baptized and made a part of Christ. Through faith, we are united with him in that gift of baptism. So what does it look like? What does it mean? Well, Paul is very clear. In baptism, we are crucified and die with Jesus. We are tied to his crucifixion on that cross. And crucifixion is about suffering. It's about the pains of death. It's about destroying the old Adam, that sinful part of us that still exists. And what suffers, according to Paul? The body of sin. It doesn't mean simply this physical body. But what it means is the lordship of sin and death over each one of us. What it's about, very clearly, is that Jesus does not desire to see sin and death rule in us any longer. That we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it may be true, but we do not have to live like the death that surrounds us. We do not have to live in the deeds of death, for crucifying with Jesus means to be putting to death our sinful selves. What that means? It means that the Christian life is about a bit of affliction. It's about a bit of of seeing in us die the sinful desire that asserts itself over God, that makes ourselves the center of all things, that we decide what to do and what not to do by what feels right to me, by having other gods, like our political beliefs, take priority over the word of God itself. What it means is if we are loved by God, united with Christ, well, what it means is we're going to have a hard time and we're going to wonder where God is. And at times we're going to say, where are you, Jesus? Where we are, he is, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our suffering. Crucifixion was not a quick process. Normally, crucifixion could take days, three days, four days, even five days, and when they finally got tired of waiting for the death to come, they would break the legs of the people crucified so they could no longer push themselves up to breathe any longer because they had to push themselves up to give their diaphragm room to inhale. And when they couldn't, they just strangled to death. And it would take days until those legs were broken. 
See, crucifixion is about the process of death, but it leads to being united with Jesus in his death, to die with Jesus. The old man is going away by the work of Christ upon us, for we have been baptized into his crucifixion. We have been baptized into his death. The old man is still going to be seen in our lives, isn't it? Especially the more aware we become of readings like the reading from Exodus that we heard. It means we're going to slowly recognize that we are not what God intended. But we cling to the word of God that says we are forgiven, that we are new because Christ is with us and we are with him through faith. What it means about living in our baptism is that we have been buried with Christ into death, buried with him in that grave. Well, that old man, that sin is buried and left in the grave and once and for all. Jesus was killed on that cross and he was buried in that tomb, but he arose to a new life, a life now fully empowered by the Spirit according to his physical body. And the works of death are buried with him. Things like sexual immorality, the idolatries that we have in our society, the leaving of God until the end of all things, until our own false gods have caved in upon themselves. Those are the things that are in the grave with Jesus. They are left where they belong, in the tomb, for they do nothing but lead to death now and eternally. In baptism, our sin is buried with Christ. In baptism, what it means to be living in our baptism means we now live with Christ and we look forward to eternal life with Jesus. So often we treat death as if it's the last word, but it's not. Death is not the last word for any of us. Life is as the children of God. Death is to be feared. Yes, that is true, it is an enemy. But for those who live in Jesus, who trust in the gifts God has given them in Christ, who through faith are united with Jesus, death is not the last word. Life is. And what it means for us is that life is not about the deeds of death, but the living acts of life. What it means is we flee sexual sins. What it means is we look about talking about our neighbor in the best way possible. What it means is we leave and we live with Christ and we honor those in authority the way we ought. What it means is we are satisfied with the gifts of God and we took covet, put coveting in its place in the tombs of our baptism. You see, that is what it means to live in our baptism. It means our relationship to God has changed, that we go to him first and foremost and not simply wait until it becomes so desperate, now we might as well try God too. But it means that we look to him and we recognize that every good gift we have is a gift that he has given what it means is we recognize the life we now live in anticipation of the end is a gift of God as well. What it means is that we start to love our neighbors as ourselves. What it means, <clears throat> what it means is that we actually care for one another, not just with our words, but with how we live and we act and we treat one another. What it means <clears throat> is life with Jesus is not just a theory, but it becomes a reality. Do you remember learning your catechism? The fourth part of baptism, Luther asks the question, what does such baptism with water signify? And he reminds us this, that every day we drown the old Adam through repentance. And through faith, we rise to live a new life. <coughs> Excuse me. What it means is we recognize that our sinful nature needs to be killed. 
I had a very pious friend. His name happened to be Peter. Well, you're very pious. It wasn't you. Uh, It it was a a friend I had in Wyoming. He was a good and faithful pastor. And he would talk about how he loved his shower in the morning. Because he would get up and the water would run on him and he'd remember how Christ had washed away his sins. Now, frankly, that's not me. I get up and say, I wish I could still be in bed. But every morning, Peter remembered that. And every morning, he prayed his prayer of repentance. And he lived in that grace of knowing that he was with Christ and Christ was with him through faith. And he crushed that sin of his life. And it meant he died to sin and lived for Christ. And that's why Paul says this is so important. Since we have forgiveness, should we continue to sin so that God's grace can abound, that his undeserved love can continue to pour out? Heaven forbid it, is what Paul says. Not at all, for we have died to this sin. So my brothers and sisters in Jesus... Let's not participate in the deeds of death. For that's what sin is, the very acts of death. Let us flee those things. Let us drown them with repentance. Let us confess them before God, begging his mercy for the sake of Christ and saying, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Let us see him for what our sins are and not try to excuse them, not try to make a reason that we're only human, so that's what is to be expected. But let us remember the very things that God has given us. Let us remember the life we have in Christ, that we have been buried with Christ, we have died with Christ, and now we are lived in the newness of life. So as Paul says, remember this and consider yourselves, for it is true, consider yourselves to be dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. That's what it means to live with Christ. That's what it means to walk with Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. We rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God found in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, We thank you for baptizing us into your Son and into his death and into his resurrection. Keep us always in this one true faith that we might daily die to sin and live to righteousness, that we might live to you, listening to your word and living accordingly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have adopted us and you have gathered a wonderful family here in Fraser. We ask that you would bless all of us with faith and hope and love, that you would bless the mission and ministry in this place, that your gospel might sound forth purely. And this week we especially pray for Jim and Pat Everett, for the Exelby family, Cindy Farthing, Dave and Bonnie Feldbush, and Dave and Barb Feldman. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask your blessing upon our nation, upon our state, upon our cities and communities, including Detroit. We pray that you would guide President Trump and Governor Whitmer for the good of all, that you bless our national and state legislators and that you'd be with our courts, that they would have wisdom, and that your church might flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, 
We ask that your word would not only be in this room, but in our homes. Bless husband and wife, that they would love and honor and cherish each other. And bless children, that they would hear your word at home and hear the gospel of what your son has done every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, be with the sick and the suffering. Those who are sick or who are recovering, those who have had surgery or are about to have surgery, those experiencing various trials, including Margaret Spencer, Ruth Gutowski, Don Schepler, Jim Mish, and all those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we'll collect our offering. You may be seated. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and you laid upon him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he's now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with the angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and you have made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you've prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us now as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son to the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.